Our team has set out to create its most ambitious sword yet, one with both historical and artistic finesse, as well as high metallurgical performance. Modeled from the 6th century Sutton Hoo European sword, and without the help of an artisan, this project would involve double-sided pattern welding, ornate garnet fastening for cloisonnate, and gold plating. Additionally, the team desired to collect and smelt its own iron ore from the Black Hills of South Dakota. Once the ore was collected, it was roasted, crushed, and fed into the bloomery with charcoal to begin smelting. The reaction was controlled by adjusting airflow through the tweers, and slag was periodically tapped to prevent them from clogging. Once the reduction reaction was complete, the bloomery was dismantled to remove the bloom. The bloom was repeatedly folded to create a billet with fewer impurities. Unfortunately, the forging characteristics remained poor, and X-ray fluorescence, metallography, and energy dispersive spectroscopy revealed the presence of high residual sulfur and impurities that made the billet unsuitable as a primary blade material. Despite this, the team was proud of the effort put into the iron's production and decided to incorporate it at the blade center. The center serpent bar was made by forge welding the iron with 1018 steel. High carbon 1084 and 15 N20 steels were forge welded together into two bars and twisted. These were then forge welded to the sides of the serpent bar, creating a new billet. Next, scallops were cut out of this billet and it was flattened to create the wavy serpent effect. Six more twist bars were created with 1084 and 15 and 20 steels. Two were welded to the billet's edges to create the front face of the blade. The remaining four were welded to the back to create the back face. In this way, a double-sided pattern weld was accomplished. A hard edge bar wrap made of 1075 and 1095 was forge welded to the blade core creating a rough blade billet. Next, the blade was forged to shape and thickness, beveled, fullered, and ground to a rough finish. After normalization, the blade was austenitized and oil quenched. A double temper completed the heat treatment. The blade was finished with hand sanding and etching in ferric chloride. Metallography and hardness, tensile, and sharpie tests were performed on material taken from the various bars. Testing on the final heat treated material showed high hardness edge and twist material and tough serpent material. 3D modeled pommel and plates were printed, molded, and cast in bronze for sections of the handle. After the plates were cast, they were cleaned, polished, and filed. Following this, they were used to enclose a layer of horn and were riveted to make the upper and lower guards. These guard plates, as well as the pommel and the waffle pattern foils, were gold-plated with a solution formulated by the team. Ebony and antler spacers were cut and shaped to make the handle. The guard plates and the handle spacers were then assembled, epoxied, and secured by peening the tank. For decoration of the pommel, Black Hills garnets found by the team, along with some from India, were selected. These garnets were ground to slabs and polished. Each garnet slab in a gold-plated waffle foil was then cut to fit the cells of the pommel. Once the pieces were inserted, the bronze walls were peened using a punch and hammer. The pommel was secured, completing the sword. 